so hello everyone in this video we are going to talk about the lead code problem which is the to sum problem and i have already given the link to this problem in the description below so in this whole video we are going to see how to solve this whole problem and particularly i am going to use c++ for that so in this video you can see in this problem that you are given an array of integers and uh, when you are given an array of integers you will have to return the indices of the two numbers such that they add up to a specific target you may assume that each input will have exactly one solution so that means you can see in this example here so if we have an array like this and we are given a number which is the target 9 so you can see that in the nums 0 position and in the first position if we will add these two numbers we will get the target so we will return these mm, as an array we will return the solution as an array which will contain two elements as a pair so if you will add them up uh, sorry if you will add the values at these position Remember, you will not have to write the numbers here. You will have to write the index positions of the numbers. So, you can see in the solution part, there is a function which is the to sum function. And here is uh, the written type. You can see it is a vector. So, if you don't know particularly about uh, vectors, you can watch the video on vectors. I will give the link to that video in the description below. So. Uh, vectors are basically dynamic arrays and it is really an important topic to uh, understand because it's mostly used in competitive programming. Alright, so now you can see in the parameters or in the argument section we have a target variable and we have a an array, sorry, a vector with uh, the name nums. So now I'm going to solve this problem using a very simple strategy. You can see the that this one is an easy problem. So I'm going to use a strategy to solve it. And basically, uh, we will also analyze the time complexity of this uh, strategy that I'm going to use to find the solution. And then we will find a better solution for that too. And we will also discuss some tips and tricks so that uh, it will become more easier for you to understand how uh, competitive programming is actually done. Alright, so uh, let's first analyze the problem on the whiteboard. Alright, so now let's say the array is nums and let me just write the array here. So the values of the array, let's say it's 2, 7, 11 and 13 and you will also have a target number so let's say the target number is equal to 9 all right so the strategy that i'm going to use here is uh, i will just run two for loops or you can say nested loops to compare all the given pairs so let's see how that will work so first of all i will just assign the index position here from 0 1 2 and 3 so the first loop will run from i equals to 0 position to the nth position or the third position in this particular case and it will first fix a number and then it will go on to 7 then 11 then 13 and there will be another uh, for for loop which will go from j equals to 0 till the end but since this will be the nested loop it will uh, work like this so let's say we are creating a for loop with int i equals 0 and this for loop will run like this and i will keep on incrementing the value of i and inside this we have another for loop and here i will create the variable 
j and the j will also be less than n and I will keep on incrementing j. So now you can see that when the value of i is initially 0, the value of j will be 0 and then since this loop will run on its own, so I am going to just create a, a, you can say this mark here so that I will know that this loop will run. So uh, when i is 0, in this case the value of j will be 0, then 1, then 2 and then 3. So what I am going to do here is, I am going to create a variable sum and this variable sum will be equal to nums ith position plus nums jth position. So the strategy is very simple you can see here that if I will assign nums uh, sorry sum as nums i plus nums j that this means that I am what I am doing is I am picking a number and I am what I am doing is I am trying to add it to all the uh, rest of the numbers by using a nested loop and when this value of sum will be equal to when this sum if the sum will be equal to the target that means that we have reached our solution and so we are going to just push the index positions in the result vector in the resultant vector using the pushback function and I will uh, just write the value of i here because we want to push the index positions and we will also push j so I am going to write here pushback j so you can see this is a very simple strategy we are using two for loops and uh, whenever we will find out that the sum is equal to the target the given target we are just pushing the values of i and j because that is what we what the desired output is but you can see that this we in this tutorial we are using two for loops which is not a good strategy because this solution will give me a time complexity of big O of n square. So big O of n square we know that it's not a good time complexity. It's not a good time complexity. So we need some other solution also. So in this part I will just write this whole algorithm in the IDE sorry in the coding playground on lead code and I will run that and we will analyze how the time complexity is varying and what is the time complexity of this algorithm is and in the next part of the tutorial which I will create in a few days I will just show you another optimized method because you know using two for loops nested for loops is not a good strategy in competitive programming and it's mostly avoided so let's move on to the lead code All right, so now we have moved to the lead code and let's code what, whatever we have understood uh, from the uh, whatever we have done the analyzation. So first I will create a resultant vector and then I will uh, find out the right uh, numbers so that we will be able to go to the uh, resultant. So the first task that I'm going to do here is at this position I will create a vector and I will call it it will hold integer values and let's name it result and now I'm going to create a variable n which will hold the size of the 
of our given array like this all right so let's move on to the nested for loops so first i will create a for loop which will run from int i equals 0 till i is less than n and i will keep on incrementing i similarly i will do it with the variable j j less than n and i'm going to increment j like this all right so one important thing that i noticed here is that the if the value of i and j is equal that means that we have reached a position where we are comparing the same element so in case of the repetition case where i is equals to equals to j uh, we are going to continue with the upper for loop which is int i so i'm going to create a check statement here if i equals equals j that means that we are on the same value and in that case we will say that we want to ignore that case because it is the no repetition case so i will write here i will use the continue keyword because it is used to uh, just break out of this for loop and it will start on continuing with the next elements so let me just comment the code here i will write no repetition all right so now we have also checked one case here so now in case when i is not equal to equal to j i will run the else part and in else part i will now create the int sum if this is less than 2 i'm going to write here if this is less than 2 then only you are allowed to push the elements all right so when we have done we are done with this if this is not the case i'm going to write a break so it will uh, when the size is ex has exceeded we're going to break out of this loop and now we are going to manage this after this else part you can see here i, I will do I will write another continue keyword and this continue keyword is basically used uh, to continue when this uh, after pushing the elements into the result vector. So now since we are done with this, now we will have to finally return the result. So this is the for loop and outside the for loop i will write return result all right so i think we are good to go so let's run this code and let's see what will be the output and if there will be any errors we will be able to solve it all right so it's saying that there is an else without a previous if all right that that means that on line number 24th all right so here we uh, i think i've placed i've misplaced it i think it should be here yeah yes after this if part we will have to write the else part So now we know that the use of this else part is that if the value of the sum is not equal to the target then we are not we are going to continue with uh, the further comparisons which you can see here. 
So let's run this code again and see if there are any further errors. All right, so you can see that the answer has been uh, accepted. The input is that this one and the output is this one. So this is a relatively very uh, easy, you can say, problem. You will just have to compare the values and push the push it into the resultant vector by analyzing some of the conditions. But one thing uh, that we have noticed here that we are going we are using these for loops uh, and the main problem is that these are the nested for loops. So uh, in programming the first step that you should always know that always avoid nested for loops. Why? Because they will give us a time complexity of big O of n square. So I'm going to write it here that the time complexity will be big O of n square. So if you will uh, you can also test the some you, you can also test your further cases you can create a test case also and you can run it on a specific test case so let's submit this solution and let's see what will be what is the time complexity that it will take so it is so you can see that the runtime is 668 milliseconds that's a lot higher you know uh, this is not a good time complexity and uh, you can see that i have created another algorithm which took only about four milliseconds so uh, so we're going to discuss this algorithm which gave me four milliseconds uh, you can see it is so much faster than the solution that we come up here so another trip for the uh, competitive programming is that uh, if you find that a problem is giving you a very higher time complexity you must think of a solution to optimize it and that's why these problems are given always spend some time with this these types of problems and always try to find uh, the more accurate or the more optimized solution and in case you're not able to find the optimized solution, I will suggest you to go to the solution tab here. You can see the solution tab here. Go to this tab only when you are not getting any good results. So here you can see that there are solution with, with approach one, which is the brute force and that was the, so this technique that we have used here is actually brute force and brute force is basically testing uh, the elements or by comparison and you can see it is also saying here that the time complexity is big o of n square so the next approach is the two pass hash table so we are going to use hash table and this is the solution that you can see here i will suggest you not to look at the solution here uh, just try it out yourself using a hash table and since we are going to use hash table in the next problem i will suggest you to go to the uh, hash table introduction that i have given in a video and i will give the link to that video also in the description below and if you're using the application the android application of thinkx academy you will be able to see the solution and the problem in the app only. So thanks for watching. Uh, let's meet in the next video.